Hi, I'm Peter Haddock and I'm in control of this video, folks, because I'm talking today from DSE, who are specialists in control systems. Why is that important, folks? Well, I talk about power generation, I talk about all these different things that we need to do to be better in the industry. But if you're in a hospital situation and the power goes out, if you're watching a Premier League game and the power goes out, if you're in Formula One and the power goes out, we've all got a big problem. So fundamentally, control systems are the things that we need to keep the power on, particularly for generators that are needed for uninterrupted power supplies. And this one, folks, the DSE 7320, is one of those units I'm going to see all the way down the factory line here being made. But first, let's see more controls here, more controls here, more controls here. Well, we need a few engineers to make them. Adam, you are one of those engineers. Tell us a little bit about this component here that you've got as well that we're gonna be talking about. So this is our new G8600 uh, parallel genset controller. This is used to link multiple generators into, into sync at the same time. So that's really important, folks, because if you need a lot of power, you need a lot of generators. And we're talking about things in a series there and we're talking about how we monitor them, but also how we control them. So one's not running at full pelt when the other one is, is running on idle. So we need these control systems to make sure that we're getting everything even and we're delivering the power that's needed right there and then, don't we? Correct. Yep. So folks, in order for this unit to work well, it actually needs to be put together well. And so the iPhone that I'm filming on at the moment uses the same machines we're going to see down the line as I go and discover what's all about the control systems that are made here at DSE. So let's go and see the factory floor. Cheers. So here we are at the start of the journey that's going to make one of these control units. Remember folks, the DSE 7320. Adam, it all starts with this board. It does. But Adam, it looks a bit too big to fit inside this one. What's happening here? Exactly. So uh, to increase the production capabilities, we build these in panels of two units. Right. So um, each one of these patterns is identical. Yep. So um, and later on in the process, we split the panel and put them into the single units. Fantastic, folks. And here we are in the factory conditions. Remember, some of this equipment is used to make the iPhone that I'm recording on here because we're talking about absolute accuracy and we're talking about absolute reliability that is required for this unit. So you can't just make one, though, can you? You've got to go and get some of these things exactly. so we can stack them in the machine. So this machine, where we start here, folks, requires these components to be stacked in. So that here we go. It's literally a drop-in situation. So now we've got the boards in the actual system. We're going to follow the whole line that you see here. But it's not just one line, folks. It's two lines that we're going to follow because we're going to have a flip moment as we get to the second line. So, Adam, it's time for us to go and see what happens next. Come on. So, folks, we've now got this board, which is absolutely ready for lots and lots of components. Start with the first machine here. Let's lift the lid and have a look inside first. So folks, inside here, you'll see that that's where the components go. And this is the first part, isn't it, Adam, of where we start the whole process. Close the door so we can kick off, because basically, folks, what we've got here is where all the solder starts coming in, haven't we, Adam? Correct, yeah. At this stage, we have a solder stencil, which has apertures cut out for all the gold pads on the board. Yep. Uh, we have a squeegee that applies a solder paste along the board and uh, covers all the spaces ready for the components to be mounted onto. What's the type of solder that you put in here and why is that important? So we have um, an Indium 4.5 halogen free solder which is, <laughs> which is made up of uh, a number of different elements and yep. um, fluxes. So it's lots and lots of tiny, tiny little balls of different alloys and flux. So later on in the process when we heat it, all those chemically bond together to create a full solar joint. So back with Adam here under the microscope this time, folks, because, you know, I wanted to find out a little bit more about the solder, the flux, the balls, the things that, that make everything on this board stick there. And so what have we got here and what can we see behind? So this microscope is uh, zooming in on one single component pad yep. here. What we can see on the large screen is the solar balls, all the different types of metal and the liquid that they're in is the flux. Right when we put them through the heat cycle at the end, they'll all combine together to create that solid solder that we're looking for. 
Right, so now it's time to move on to that heat section with a new piece of equipment you just invested in. Come on, folks, let's go. So now, folks, the soldering's been done and it's so intricate, you wouldn't believe the amount of stuff that's going there. I can now see how many components are gonna go into each of these boards. And, you know, that is a, such a complex thing to put into a tight space. So, now, what's next? Once this has been completed and we've done a full inspection of the solder, yep. um, we then pass it into the pick and flares machine to uh, mount the chips. And this is the process for the first check, folks. It's all about checking that everything's right at every stage. By the time you put it in, we've got to keep the line going. Come on. So, Adam, we've come down here into the clever bit where we've got all the components on reels here. And now the machine is actually placing those components right behind us here. Wow, it's crazy. There's how many components are fitted at each time? Each uh, so every pass is 16 components on this. Right. Time. So that is going super fast, 16 components, every single pickup. It, it makes me feel nervous, Adam, because it's just so quick. But oh, we've got camera systems in here Correct. as well, haven't we? Making sure everything's placed in the right spot. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So every time the, uh, the head passes over, yeah. there's a red flash. That red flash inspects all 16 components on there to make sure that they're in the right orientation and it corrects any twist that's maybe on those parts before it places it down onto the PCB. But what happens if we run out the reels though, Adam? Well, the reels won't actually run out. So we've got a system telling us how many components are left on each of the reels. Ah, right. So the machine will notify the operative. Yep. The operative will then splice a reel on Right. Okay, and the machine will continue to place. We're going to get that splicing moment because that's something I think I could do and help out with, Adam. Okay? Absolutely. We'll catch that in a moment, folks. The machine will indicate when we need a splice or when the machine is starting to run low of a component. Yep. The operative can then collect that component yep. and then begin the splice operation. That means that the machine will never run out of parts. We've always got a constant supply going into the line. I'm pushing down until it clicks and then I come up and voila, we have the spliced connection here. But then the next phase for this folks is to identify this with the machine. So Mark's gonna come over and help me do that process. The delicate hands of Mark folks. So this is now identifying in the machine that we have got a component change over here. First thing he's gonna do is identify himself that is his unique code. Then he's going to actually go into the system, identify the reel. That's again a unique code. And then as we come back, folks, he'll put the amount of components that were due into that reel so the machine knows what's coming in to the reel and therefore you know, how it can display that information as it moves forward and then tell us when it's coming up for a little change required as we move on. So thanks very much, Mark. It's been great to see you working there. And uh, just got to oh, slide it in, folks. And we are now absolutely ready to go to the next phase. So now, folks, I've got some tweezers because, I'm sorry, Adam, I'm going to be a bit cheeky here because all of these things, and we're talking about productivity and efficiency with all these machines. We're talking about testing and things like that. But testing's there for a reason. Sometimes things do go wrong, especially if you've invited me here with a pair of tweezers to... Um, and just lodge one of your components, Adam. So I'm going to do that right now. So follow the tweezers in, folks, as I make the really, really bad decision by changing the component off here and putting it at about a 45 degree angle. You can see there that there's solder patch underneath there. So it's all been changed, folks. <laughs> 